This is the first section of AT microeconomics. So we're going to be looking at fixed variable, marginal, total um, costs. Um, I'm not going to look at short run and long run costs and those differences because I'll look at some of that in the diminishing returns presentation and when we look at economies of scale. So key terms for this section are fixed costs, which are costs that do not vary with output. And an example of this would be rent. So you have to pay rent. It doesn't matter if you produce 100 units or 10,000 units. The rent is a charge that's set by your landlord, landlady, and you have to pay it regardless of how much you produce. Whereas variable costs are costs that do vary with output. So these could be raw materials. The more you make, the more raw materials you need. Um, a lot of costs, though, do have some elements of being both fixed and variable. So just watch out for those. So when I was um, looking to do this presentation, I was thinking about different examples of it. And I thought line rental for phone lines is actually a fixed cost. Um, it doesn't matter how many calls you make, the line rental will always be the same. But then the charges for the costs are variable. So a telephone has an element of being both fixed and variable. So total costs our total fixed costs add total variable costs and this is what they'd look like on a diagram because uh, we've got output along the bottom along the y-axis um sorry x-axis <laughs> i don't know what i'm thinking because uh, we've got output along the bottom um total fixed costs don't change with output because that's the definition of them whereas we can see total variable costs if you make nothing uh, you're going to be charged nothing so it starts from zero uh, going upwards now in the presentation about diminishing returns we will have a look at why that's actually a curved line likely to be a curved line um, but if you add them together you get total costs there so it's just shifted that total variable cost up by the amount and actually the difference the distance between the total variable cost and the total cost is the amount um, of fixed costs that you're paying more definitions then average fixed costs would just be total fixed cost divided by output average variable cost would be total variable cost divided by output and average um, total cost therefore would just be total cost divided by output and this is what they look like on a diagram if we put them all together so average fixed cost what they start off um, quite large but as you're dividing it by more and more units because the top number as you can see here will never be changing when um, you're varying the output uh, the number the result that you're getting keeps on getting smaller and smaller. It, it tends towards zero, but it won't ever reach zero. Um, average variable costs, we see this curved shape. And uh, again, I'll explain why it um, has a, a curved shape. So at the beginning, it um, decreases. And then after a certain point, um, you get diminishing returns. And so it, you see an increase in the average variable costs. So we're seeing actually here increasing returns and then decreasing or diminishing returns. Um, and then if we put them together, if we add them together, we get the average total cost. Um, and the higher your fixed costs are, actually, as a proportion of total costs, the longer you will see this decrease for. So when you do see later on in the course, when you do see, let's see if I can get a pen here, when you do see um, curves that go something like that, whoops, <laughs> um, not a very curvy line that one there we go a little bit better when you do see curves that go a little bit like that for average cost basically all it's showing is just that fixed costs are very high proportion of cost so you're going to see that with uh, natural monopolies um, later on so marginal costs are just the cost of making one additional unit of output so let's put all of these numbers together and um, see if we can work out um, what's going on here and represent them in a table because the specification does actually say that you need to be able to work with these numbers so here we've got total fixed costs here we've got total variable costs um, and so if we start to fill in this we know that fixed costs don't vary with output so they're going to be 70 all along and we know if we make nothing we're, we're not going to have to pay any variable costs so that's going to be zero so total costs is just going to be adding up your total fixed costs with your total variable costs so that's what we're going to get with total costs. Average fixed costs is, as I said before, just getting this fixed cost and dividing it by the quantity. Now you can't divide something by zero, so that's why I've got a little dash there. But those are the average fixed costs, um, right up to producing six units. 
average variable cost is going to be the same method, but instead of using total fixed cost, we're using total variable cost, and we're going to divide it by the quantity. So that's uh, what that comes out as. And then average total cost, you can just add these two together, um, but the way the idea is your total cost um, divided by your quantity. And then your marginal cost is just the change in your total cost from producing zero units to producing one, and then from producing one to producing two. Now, in some textbooks, they put the number between the line, but I just put it at the table just to make it easier for myself. So they'd put the kind of the 120 there, um, but you can see where I've put it. So if you want to produce one unit of output as opposed to zero units of output, you're going to be paying 120. If you want to produce two as opposed to producing one, you only need to pay 30 more. So we can see that at first marginal costs fall and then they start to rise. And again, that's explained in the diminishing returns um, presentation. So this is the most common diagram that you see when we're looking at costs. We don't tend to put on there average variable costs and average fixed costs and fixed costs and variable costs and total costs. We just look at average costs and marginal costs. And this is these are certainly the curves that we use to represent when we're looking um, represent costs. That is when we're looking at monopolies and perfect competition and uh, marginal costs. Usually we just put down for um, oligopolies. Um, but what's really interesting is uh, to just note a few things. So we can see that marginal cost is intersecting average cost at its lowest point. Um, and uh, this is the point of productive efficiency. You should remember this from your AS course as well. Um, so uh, what happens when we um, start to adjust some of these costs? So what would happen to this diagram if fixed costs increase or decrease? And what would happen to this diagram if variable costs increase or decrease? So this is my table that I had just a few seconds ago. I'm just going to turn everything blue now to say that this is the starting point. And what I'm going to do is adjust total fixed costs. And I'm just going to increase it by 10. So we can see there that everything Thing there has just increased by 10. Okay, so what impact does this have on the rest of the, the chart? Well, it's going to have an impact on total costs. Everything there is going to also increase by 10. And when we're looking at average fixed costs, this is also going to adjust as well. So we're dividing um, still by the same quantity, but total fixed cost has changed. And then it's going to have an impact on total uh, average total cost as well. But what we can see here is it has no impact on marginal cost. And this is quite significant, really. So if we look at this diagram, what will happen is it will look something like, and it's not very easy drawing with this. Um, that was a bit of a rubbish line. Um, it will look something like this. OK, so what is happening is that average cost is increasing upwards. And remember, it still has to intersect at this lowest point. So it's moved slightly to the right here. So when our fixed cost, the reason for that is when fixed costs increase, and I told you before, um, the greater the proportion of total costs that fixed costs make up, the longer you get the, the benefits from increasing um, the um, output for, because you're spreading your fixed costs over a greater number of units. But we can see there that marginal cost, I haven't drawn another marginal cost uh, because marginal cost didn't um, change. Okay, so this is significant because I've got a nice slide here. So changes in fixed costs mean that the average cost curve shifts. So upwards for an increase in fixed cost, downwards for a decrease in, uh, in fixed costs. But it has no impact on marginal costs. So when we're thinking about the profit maximizing output of firms, because a lot of them will be thinking about this, we're thinking about marginal cost equals marginal revenue for the profit maximizing output. This is not going to change the profit maximizing output because marginal cost hasn't changed. However, it will reduce the super normal profit made because, um, and I can't show you on that previous diagram because I didn't have average cost and I didn't, sorry, I didn't have average revenue, I didn't have marginal revenue, but because the average cost has um, shifted upwards, it's going to reduce the height of the super normal profit box. And you can, if you want to, you draw that diagram out and you, you'll see that result. So, that's fixed cost. We know it's not going to have an impact on marginal cost, but it is going to reduce supernormal profit, although it's not going to uh, change the uh, profit maximizing output. So what happens when we adjust variable costs? So there I've just adjusted variable costs a little bit. Um, not 
equally for fixed costs I just adjusted it by 10 each time total very couple costs have um, adjusted a little bit differently in this case again you need to watch the diminishing returns presentation if you want to really fully understand why that happens um, but we have that change to total cost because we have to add total fixed cost to total variable costs we're going to change average variable costs as well uh, average total cost is going to change but we can see here that there is actually a bigger difference between 70 and 200 uh, than just 120 now it's gone up to 130 we can see there's a bigger difference between 200 and 235 it's gone up to 35 so we can see that marginal costs have actually increased there as well um, so on a diagram oof, I don't feel that I'm going to do very well at this okay so and I'm already not doing very well let's try that one again I'll do it in a different color here we go right average cost first of all we're going to see this moving up okay not not so bad much easier if you've got a pencil I'm doing this with a mouse okay and then we know the um, marginal cost has to in average cost at its lower lowest point and you can see me just trying to adjust my diagram here <laughs> so that I can get up to the lowest point but what that's going to mean thing a little bit oh my marginal cost is going a lot better or it was doing um so there we go you just have to imagine use your imagination now and imagine that that is actually the lowest point and that's kind of central um but we can see there that um if I imagine a little marginal revenue curve Okay, we can see that the profit maximizing output, because marginal cost has changed, has actually changed. Okay, so what do we get when we get changes in variable costs? We get a shift of the AC curve upwards for an increase, downwards for a decrease. We know that because average cost is made up of variable costs as well, but it's also going to shift MC. So it, this will change the profit maximizing output and um, it's going to reduce the profit maximizing output if variable costs increase and this is also going to reduce supernormal profit as well um, because it's going to take um, whereas before with fixed costs I said it took a little bit of that height off the box it's actually going to take a little bit of length off the box so you'd have to draw that diagram out to really understand what I'm saying but it's going to reduce the box the supernormal profit box by by the length and if um, if a uh, variable costs decrease the profit maximizing, maximizing output actually increases and this increases the supernormal profit box because it increases the length of the box okay I've not actually covered all of those things I've just covered these things um, for this presentation